Hi, welcome to another Cold Fusion video. For decades, consumers and industry alike have been waiting for a better battery, one that charges faster and lasts longer. A material called graphene has promised this since its discovery in 2004. As we've seen a few times on this channel, there's been many recent steps towards building better batteries, but nothing in the form of a product that you can actually buy yet. But today we're going to look at something different. A real graphene enhanced battery has just hit the market and is available to the public. It hints at the first glimpse of a new wave of battery technology. Let's take a look. You are watching Cold Fusion TV. So firstly, what is graphene? I've talked about it before in a previous episode, but for those of you who are new or just can't be bothered watching the previous video, here's a quick rundown. Graphene has its origins in graphite, the stuff that pencils are made from. Graphite, essentially, is a 3D arrangement of carbon atoms. When you change the arrangement of atoms to a 2D structure, that is, flat, you end up with graphene. Graphene was just a theory until 2004, when two scientists at the University of Manchester created the first sample of the substance. They were polishing a sample of graphite with tape and noticed that extremely thin flakes stuck to the tape. This inspired them to create the thinnest sample possible and as a result, graphene was born. The discovery shook the scientific community and in 2010, the two scientists won the Nobel Peace Prize. So it may not sound like much, but changing the arrangement of atoms from 3D to 2D unlocks incredible physical properties. Graphene is over 100 times stronger than steel while being incredibly thin at only one atom thick. It's so strong that just two atomic layers of the material can be bulletproof. It's almost completely transparent, extremely light, and is the best conductor of electricity and heat known to man. These conductivity properties are perfect for electrical applications, which brings us back to the battery. Real Graphene, a company out of Los Angeles, has been researching graphene batteries for years, and they've beaten everyone to the punch by bringing an actual graphene battery to market. Digital Trends spoke to the CEO, Samuel Gong, about some of the technology, so I'll be including some of his statements in the episode. So first things first, how long does their battery take to charge? Well, with an average phone battery of about 3000 milliamp hours, you're looking at around one and a half hours to get from zero to 100%. For these graphene enhanced batteries, it's 20 minutes. To achieve this, you need to use a 60 watt charging brick. Though if you pumped 60 watts into a regular battery, it would fry itself. The graphene batteries also have a longer lifetime. Most phone batteries can last around 600 charge cycles. The new batteries are rated for 1,500 cycles for the same capacity. To top it all off, it's safer than regular batteries as well, because the cell generates much less heat and runs much cooler. Samuel Gong explains, Graphene is an amazing conductor of heat and electricity. Lithium doesn't like it when you put a lot of energy in and when you take a lot of energy out. We've applied graphene in two different ways. We mix it in the solution with lithium, plus we've added a composite layer, like a sheet of it, in the lithium battery. It acts like a conductor for the electricity and doesn't generate as much heat. So as mentioned, you can already buy one of these graphene enhanced batteries. It comes in the form of a power bank called the G100. At 10,000 milliamp hours, or three times the average phone capacity, it's rated to fully charge from empty in about half an hour, and that's with a 100 watt charger. A second version, the G100 Max, will hold twice the capacity. The YouTube channel, Gary Explains, has a good video on the initial testing of the G100, and it is legitimate. With a 60 watt charger, he managed to charge 10,000 milliamp hours in 50 minutes. To highlight, that's the equivalent of charging your phone in about 16 minutes, and without the dangers of overheating the battery. But the most exciting thing is that this is just the start. The company, Real Graphene, is in talks with many industry partners to provide batteries. In fact, they've already built them and testing is already underway. The company is working on making graphene batteries for everything from smartwatches to battery-powered golf carts. As Gong states, Quote, we'll be seeing graphene batteries in actual big brand devices within a year. Not in every single device, but trickling down from the higher end first. 
People think graphene is a thing of the future, but I'm here to correct them. It's here, now. We create a battery that can charge super fast, is very cool, and has a long lifetime in terms of charge cycles. He goes on to mention that a lot of companies that claim to be using graphene are actually using graphite, its three-dimensional cousin. Therefore, they don't have any of the amazing benefits. So here's a question. How do you make these things? Making graphene in sheet form is a complex process, especially in the amounts needed for consumer use. Graphene is massively expensive. A few years ago, one kilo of graphene cost $300,000. Thanks to advancements in the manufacturing process, this cost is falling dramatically. In 2010, it used to be around $1,000 per cubic centimeter, and now it's only one cent. An average sheet goes for around $25. And this is the key to why graphene is finally coming online. So tomorrow, if a phone manufacturer wanted to use real graphene's battery, could the company pull it off? CEO Samuel Gong thinks so. Quote, It's easy for us to scale up because we make the graphene. We could do this either by using a battery facility owned by a manufacturer or by partnering with another battery firm. And scaling isn't the only thing that would be easy. Even swapping out the battery on the phone manufacturer's end would be painless. Quote, Adding a graphene sheet doesn't affect the attributes of the cell. It's only one to five atomic layers thick, and this doesn't affect the physical properties at all. It's an easy plug and play. Because the cells can be in the same shape and size, you get the immediate benefits of graphene. So there must be a downside, and there is. A graphene battery would add about 30% extra cost to the battery component of a phone, but I'm sure some consumers wouldn't mind. So in my view, this is exceptionally encouraging for graphene, and this is just the tip of the iceberg. Only by just incorporating a sheet of graphene into a battery, we're seeing such improvements. The more graphene that gets introduced, the more advantages we'll see. But to be perfectly clear, even though the overall battery life has increased in terms of life cycle, the actual capacity hasn't increased that much using this method. For that, we'll have to look to Samsung. In the world of batteries, the last remaining hurdle is higher capacity per unit volume. In this, Samsung may be able to help. Subscribers would remember the episode where we covered Samsung's graphene-infused batteries. They have about 30% more energy density than regular lithium-ion batteries, so they should last around 30% longer. According to the company, these batteries should be coming to market next year. I've already done a detailed video on the Samsung battery, and I'll leave it for you in the description. So some final thoughts to finish off. Just imagine when graphene technology is fully matured. It could mean a world of difference, not only for mobile phones and laptops, but most excitingly, electric cars and electric planes, not even to mention grid energy storage. Beyond this, it could change material science and engineering as we know it. For me, this is especially interesting. My university thesis was in the realm of materials engineering, so I have been following this and will continue to follow this very closely. All right, so that's about it. I hope you learned something from that. And if you did, feel free to subscribe to this channel. Okay, so this has been Dagogo, and you've been watching Cold Fusion, and I'll catch you again soon for the next video. Cheers, guys. Have a good one. Thank you.